What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at some camera tests of the Red Gemini 5K. The first test that we're going to look at is the high ISO performance, going from 250 to 1600 for the standard ISO range, and then 1600 to 12800 for the extended or dual native ISO range. We're also going to check out the exposure recovery, so going under five stops and over five stops and trying to pull it back in post-production. And again, we're going to do that in both of the native ISOs. The sample footage for the Gemini isn't going to be in this video. It's going to be in a separate one, and I'll link to it at the end once I get that up. So without further ado, let's jump right into the first test looking at the ISO performance of the Red Gemini. So starting off with our lowest ISO at 250, we're gonna go through the whole range, uh, 250 up to 1600 in that first range, like I mentioned, and then 1600 to 12,800. We're going from a red log film to a graded BT709 image. If you look up in the upper right hand corner, we have a 300% crop in just on the chip chart. So you can see in a little bit better detail what's happening in those shadow areas as we raise up this ISO level. So up to 500, we're still having a super clean image and we're not really getting any additional noise in there, which we're gonna see basically up through about 1200. Now we're at ISO 800 and this is the first native ISO for the Gemini 5K sensor. We're gonna go up to 1000 and we're starting to see a little bit of dancing around in there, but we're not getting any color noise. It's a very organic feeling which is gonna be very similar through the rest of this standard ISO range. And so this is 1600, this is at the end of our standard ISO range. We're gonna switch over to the low light range, again, starting at 1600. And we are seeing a little bit of cleaning up of the image between the standard 1600 and the low light 1600, but it's not a huge difference as you can see here. Going up to ISO 2000, we're seeing some more of that dancing around, but again, not too much color noise, which is really great. Up to ISO 3200, and this is the second native ISO in the low light range. And with this, we're not seeing as much of a clean image. We're starting to get some color noise in there with those green and magentas dancing around, and it's looking a lot more digital instead of organic like we saw with the standard range. Going up to 5,000, this is starting to push what I would think would be acceptable. You could probably use a little bit of noise reduction to clean it up a little bit, but beyond this, it's gonna be really hard to clean up and get a really solid image out of it. Going up to 6,400, this is the second to last ISO level that we can get, and we're seeing a ton of noise. Then going up to ISO 12,800, which is the highest ISO that you can get with this camera, and we're starting to see a ton of that digital noise in there, those greens and magentas dancing all around. So that was the ISO performance of the Red Gemini. Now let's take a look at the exposure recovery. So we're gonna start off with our standard native ISO and we're right around 65 to 70 IRE on our skin tones and this is gonna be our correct exposure. We're gonna start off by going underexposed first. So on the left, you can see the actual shot, which is one stop underexposed. And then on the right, you're gonna see the recovered shot, which is what we've been able to bring back in post-production. Going one stop under, it's pretty clear that you can bring that back. Going to two stops underexposed, in some of those darker areas, right in those shadows, if you look on the leg of the dinosaur on the top and right underneath that two by four going across, you can start to see some digital noise in there. Going to three stops under, we're starting to get a lot more of that dancing around in those magentas and greens, but we're able to recover most of this image and we could probably clean this up with some noise reduction. Going to four stops underexposed, we're starting to get a little bit of a color shift in the magenta direction, and we're seeing a lot more of that dancing noise, and we're starting to lose a little bit of detail in like the cup and some of the other areas. And then five stops under, we're seeing this almost as like 12,800. We're seeing a ton of dancing noise and even a little bit of vertical banding in the recovered shot. Now we're gonna go back to our correct exposure, and then we're going to overexpose the image. So starting with overexposing by one stop, on the left side again, you see your actual shot and on the right is the recovered shot. One stop over is no problem with bringing back all of the details in the image. Going to two stops overexposed, we're brightening up now a little bit and we're starting to lose a little bit of detail in the actual shot, but we're able to recover all of it in our recovered shot and bringing it back in post. Going to three stops over, again, brightening it up by another stop, we're able to recover all of that information. 
going to four stops overexposed, we're starting to lose a little bit of detail in those really highlight areas like in the mug and we're starting to have a little bit of overexposed on my face but for the most part we're able to cover most of that skin tones back and it's definitely usable. Going to five stops overexposed, this is where we're losing a lot of information in basically any of the highlight areas on the two by four, on the mug, my face, the chart behind me, basically anywhere where there's white or a lighter color, we're losing that information and we're not able to recover it, trying to bring it down in our post-production process. Now we're gonna switch over to our low light native ISO and we're gonna do the same thing. So we're going to have our correct exposure and then we're going to underexpose the image by one stop. On the left side, you see the actual shot, which is one stop under. On the right is the recovered shot. And in this low light test, you can definitely bring it back, but already I'm starting to see a little bit of a color shift and some noise dancing around. But going to two stops under, we're already starting to see a lot more of that noise in the colors and in the shadow areas, which is gonna be pretty tough to clean up. You might be able to get away with it at two stops, but I don't think you're gonna be able to once we get into that three stops under range. So here we are at three stops under. We're starting to get kind of a washing out of the image, which is a little bit hard to bring back. And we're seeing a ton of dancing around and digital noise that's happening. Four stops under, it's starting to struggle quite a bit. We're getting some loss of detail as well as a ton of dancing noise. And this is gonna be unusable for pretty much any project. Going down to five stops, again, looks like we are cranking the ISO right now and we're having a ton of noise in those greens and we're getting some blotchy pixelated areas as well. So going back to our low light correct exposure, and now we're going to overexpose the image. On the left side is our overexposed by one stop, and then on the right, again, is that recovered shot and what we're able to bring back. One stop over, super easy to bring back in post-production, and it looks really clean. Going to two stops overexposed, we're already starting to get a little bit bright on some of those areas, but we're able to recover it all in the face, which is the most important part. Up to three stops, again, very clean. We're starting to see a little bit of a shift towards a yellow greeny color rather than that little bit warmer magenta. Going to four stops overexposed, we're starting to lose some of the detail in the face like we kept with up until about five stops on the other one. We're just losing some of those highlight areas and a little bit of detail and definition. And then we go to five stops and again, completely blown out, unrecoverable in all of those highlight areas. And we're just getting a very washed out, overexposed image. That's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys are getting something out of these ISO and exposure recovery tests. If you guys wanna try out the Red Gemini 5K for yourself, I'm gonna throw a link to it right up here, as well as in the description below. If you guys have any questions about this camera, make sure to leave those in the comments. And if you guys wanna see more of these tests, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for new videos every single week, and I'll see you the next one.